Hi everyone, my name is Edie Summers and I run this site, Chronic Fatigue Support, and I'm going to start doing some live videos as well as other types of videos to hopefully help you um, with your journey with um, having chronic fatigue or whether that's due to CFS or maybe you have chronic fatigue for another reason or maybe you have some other type of health issue. So I'm calling this episode being a health detective. Let's start from the beginning. And my hope is to help you gain some insight into your situation. Um, so some of you have reached out to me personally and I really appreciate that. I've gotten to know some of you. Um, feel free to add me as a friend on Facebook. My name is Edie Summers. You can um, add me as a friend on there. And I do my best to answer comments on this page. There are so many. We have such an active community and I think it's a real blessing. Um, it's far more than I ever could have imagined. And of course, um, a lot of times our, our page gets shared a lot of other places too. We do have a private group as well that's called Chronic Fatigue Coach. And that's if you wanna talk about your issues or health issues or anything at all in a more private setting. So you can Google on Facebook, Chronic Fatigue Coach. You can come join us on there as well. So today I'm gonna to be talking about how to be a health detective. And um, that's even itself a big, a broad topic, but hopefully it will help you um, narrow down a point of focus and help you start to hopefully maybe even find some answers or gain some insight. So um, a little bit about me really briefly. I developed chronic fatigue in my early 20s after a ski accident. And then I had surgery afterwards and I had a lot of energy before. I was 22 when it happened and um, you know, I noticed a huge dip in my energy levels. I went from someone who had a lot of energy to feeling like I need to sleep 12 hours a day. And I just, I was struggling with my energy when I was awake as well. So it was a huge change for me and it was really unsettling and scary. Um, I was so young and I didn't know how it was going to affect how I could work, what my relationships were going to be like. It changed everything. So I started looking for answers. Um, actually, what happened was I was in physical therapy and they started giving me anti-inflammatories. Um, again, I had a ski accident, so I broke my knee. And hi, Debbie. Thanks for tuning in. Um, yeah, feel free to write comments and I will um, type back comments afterwards. Um, but. Um, I'll say hello verbally and um, I might leave some information in the comments or maybe somewhere in this video at the top if I can figure out how to do this. This is one of my first lives. So um, so I broke my knee and they were giving me anti-inflammatories to get my knee down back. My knee was straight. It was like this and I couldn't bend it. So in the process of taking like maybe six to eight, eight ibuprofen every day um, and then on top of that, or in instead of that, around seven, eight, or eight months into it, they started giving me, they told me to take um, a prescription form of Aleve, which is an over, <clears throat> is an over-the-counter ibuprofen, and um, the, the prescription version is called Naprosyn. And I started having a lot of issues in addition to fatigue and, you know, my knee was getting a little better. I got it to about 90 degrees at about eight months, but I couldn't get it down beyond that because I was having inflammation issues and I was reacting to the ibuprofen. So it was like one issue after another and I started getting really depressed and I stayed in bed for a week. I was just, you know, after taking naproxen, which is a prescription drug, and I just want to say I... I have nothing against prescription drugs. Um, my, my own body just personally didn't react well to it and I didn't know why at the time. That was something I figured out later that I don't process prescription drugs well. And for some people with chronic fatigue, that is an issue. Um, so again, these are big topics and the, the topic today is being a health detective. So I wanna give you hopefully a few insights so you can start to maybe start to figure out what worked for you, what will potentially work for you. The goal is to get to the root cause and we can't always know what the root cause is of our chronic fatigue or our health condition, but um, if we do figure it out, it can, it can really help. 
So um, at any rate, I was having I was having a bad reaction, and I was getting more inflammation. I was feeling worse. So I took myself off the naproxen, and I went to see a naturopath. I was desperate. I was just desperate for anything. I was a dance major at the time. I, I thought, I'm not going to be able to dance again. I can't get my knee past 90 degrees. And it's again, it's a long story, and I cover it. I actually wrote a book on the whole subject of dealing dealing with the health issue, dealing with chronic fatigue, and I'll share more with you at the end, but this really briefly is my book. It's called The Memory of Health. It took me 10 years to write. So I talk about my story in there and also a lot of um, things, a lot of different causes, potential causes of chronic fatigue and also other potential health issues and also tactics and strategies to potentially get better. So I'll mention that more in a little bit, but I went to see a naturopath and um, he recommended some natural anti-inflammatories and that started to help me. And my, my inflammation started going down and I was able to get my knee all the way almost back down. So this is my arm, but I'm trying to show you that it was my knee. <laughs> anyway, this is really exciting because um, I started to feel better and I wanted to know more about what had helped me and why. So I did my very best to get a job at this health food store where these, these supplements and this kind of, this world of natural healing, you know, this had started to help me. My energy was better, my inflammation got went down, my knee was getting better. I had more range of motion and so I wanted to learn as much as possible. It took me six months to get my foot in the door and it paid like four twenty-five an hour. <laughs> But I stayed there for years and I learned so, so much. And I also want to clarify that I believe in integrative medicine, which is the best of both worlds. Natural medicine, modern medicine, it's really about finding what works best for you. So again, these are huge topics and I could say much, much more about any one of these topics that I just brought up, but let's talk about being a health detective. So I want to say that I just watched a documentary, a docu-series, and it's called Exhausted, and I shared it with you, um, you know, the link to watch it. it, it aired about a month ago, and you can still watch it, it was free for a while, and now, um, if you want to watch it online, they charge about 20 bucks a month, and you can find it on whole.tv. It's called Exhausted, and it is so good, it breaks down. You know, I've done a lot of research on chronic fatigue. I've done a lot of research on chronic illness. I'm seeing something pop up there. I'm just gonna close that down so I can see you, even, <laughs> um, even theoretically. <laughs> um, I've done a ton of research, and a lot of that research is in my book as well. Um, these guys in Exhausted, they do a fantastic job of breaking down, I believe, a lot of the causes of chronic fatigue and um, why people are feeling so exhausted. Now, of course, CFS is different, um, but it covers, it touches upon CFS as well. And the reason I'm bringing up this docu-series, again, it's called Exhausted. Let me show you really quickly. If you wanted to check it out, if you can see my computer, see, here I am on whole TV, and there's Exhausted. Now, I ordered the physical version as well, this is also really good, Interconnected. This is a really, really great series, but Exhausted. This is the one that I'm talking about. And you can get it on whole.tv, whole.tv. They charge about 20 bucks a month, and you could even just pay for one month and watch it. Again, I ordered the physical version as well because it is so good. It gives you really clear steps on what to do. And the reason I'm bringing this up is because it reminded me of what I suspected was the root cause of my chronic fatigue. And I'm not saying that this is your root cause. Um, you might have a different root cause. And you, you may be on chronic fatigue support because you have chronic fatigue or CFS, um, but you also may have another type of chronic condition that's related to having the symptom of chronic fatigue, say fibromyalgia, or multiple sclerosis, or um, rheumatoid arthritis, or you might be on chronic fatigue support or seeing this video on another channel that's been shared because you have some type of health issue. It may not be related to chronic fatigue. It might be something else. 
Um, and again, like I was saying, a lot of times we can't know the, the root cause, but if you can, if you can figure it out, I'm going to share details about being a health detective and what that means. It can mean many things, um, but if you can start to figure it out, it's like a light bulb goes off and it can be a huge help in modifying what you do because now you have a, you have a better understanding of what's happening. So I want to say that for me, even though I had run across this research before and I put it in my book, when I heard it again in this documentary, Exhausted, or this docu-series, a light bulb went off for me. And they described in detail my symptoms and my situation. And I realized, oh, that's right. I ran across this research before. This is the cause of my chronic fatigue and CFS. Now, again, I'm not saying that this is going to be your cause, but I want to share um, a good example of how, why it is important to pay attention to your symptoms, to know your symptoms in detail, which most of us do, but paying attention to how your symptoms are described if you see it, if you see it read somewhere else, or say if you hear your symptoms say that someone else is describing to you, or that you hear in a documentary, or that you read in a book, or when you go to see a practitioner, and I know finding a practitioner is its own challenge, and one of the ways that chronic fatigue support I found has been hopefully really helpful for you is by people asking for recommendations for a practitioner. So I know it can be challenging to find the right practitioner. In my opinion, um, people that are trained in functional medicine are really good, and again, in the exhausted documentary, um, there are a lot of practitioners that you could actually connect with through the exhausted documentary and they are really, really good at helping you with a lot of the symptoms of chronic fatigue and even potentially the, the root source. But if you do have a practitioner that you're working with, um, you want to describe your symptoms in detail to the practitioner in case it rings a bell with them as well. So. Let me kind of dial back here and explain what happened for me in terms of making the connection between my symptoms and what I heard in this exhausted docu-series. And again, this is research that I had come across before. It's actually in my book. I cover oh, like a hundred different theories of chronic fatigue in my book, close to it. Um, and I piece it together, but to, hear, to have heard it again in this exhausted docu-series was really, really helpful. So I heard word for word what my experience was. Maybe you will hear word for word what your experience is either in this video or in your continued research or searching. Just remember, so the first tip is to be a health detective is to really pay attention to your symptoms, be able to describe them in detail so that you have you know you could keep a journal um, or you know again a lot of us are aware of our the details of our symptoms but you want to be able to describe it to a practitioner describe them to a practitioner or you want to be aware enough that they are at the forefront of your mind not to kind of torture yourself with knowing what your symptoms are but so that you can recognize when they're being described say in something that you read or something that you hear or in a conversation you're having with your practitioner. So what happened for me was um, in listening to the exhausted documentary, they were talking about how did you know that if your body, if you're one of the things that causes chronic fatigue, and I believe this is a huge reason for chronic fatigue, even potentially CFS. Now I want to say I'm not a practitioner. I'm not trying to diagnose you. Anything I share here is not to diagnose you or treat you. Um, I like to share information. I like to educate. And that's why I wrote a whole book on this subject. My goal is to hopefully share something with you that might register with you. And you might have an aha moment and say, that sounds like me. So what I heard in this docuseries was that when your body is constantly stressed out and it can develop low cortisol and it can stay there 
And that's where the symptoms of chronic fatigue come from. So I didn't describe that very well. Just the, <laughs> It's really not that complicated, but these guys describe it much better. Let me share some of the research I found with you. Again, I really recommend the series Exhausted because they describe many different scenarios for why you might have chronic fatigue, including the one I just described, which I'm going to go into more detail here. Um, yours could be connected to mine or it could be another reason. But again, you want to listen for what sounds like your situation. That sounds like a good way to remember it. Listen to what sounds like your situation. So let me share a little bit more with you. So again, I'm a huge fan of research and I know a lot of you are as well. Um, we're always researching, right? We're always trying to find more information about what might help us. I've done a ton of research over the years, and again, I compiled a lot of it in my book, and I'll share with you more how you can get my book toward the end if you're interested. Again, my book is called The Memory of Health, and I'm going to read a little bit from that. But first, let me start with this other book. This book is called The End of Illness, and I'm the kind of person that looks for patterns. I look for patterns in things. This is actually what science does as well. I'm not claiming to be a scientist, but I can't help it. I find patterns in things and then I make connections. Um, so in this book, The End of Illness, what really caught my attention was this paragraph. And I'll tell you why. And it's very much connected to all of us. Again, this is about being a health detective. You want to pay attention to what sounds like your symptoms, what sounds like you. So this is this paragraph that I'm going to read to you. It's a very short paragraph. It's kind of an overview of the mechanism for what I believe caused my chronic fatigue. This may or may not apply to you. However, this is a very general understanding of how wellness works in the body and how the systems work in the body. So this is a big concept. It's, we're talking about homeostasis here and what happens when your body gets out of homeostasis depending on stress or other issues and how this can create an imbalance. So the goal is homeostasis. I call it an active homeostasis, um, but there is a balancing act, I'm reading from the book now, between upregulation and downregulation. This is the heart and soul of our homeostatic patterns. When there's too much of one thing, say like stress, we downregulate. And when there's not enough of another, say like nutrition, we upregulate. And I know those, might, those words, you might be wondering what those words mean. I'll try to explain those, even though, again, I'm not a doctor or a scientist. So that's really the part I wanted to read to you because, and I'm going to go more into this in my other research here to share with you how this is all connected. So again, this is me being a health detective for my own condition. However, I believe that this will apply to many of you. And even if this isn't the issue for you, I'm hoping that you still stay vigilant to seek answers because I believe that they're out there. Now, we don't have a formal definition or a formal, um, we don't know for sure what's going on with CFS, for instance. However, they're getting closer and closer. I believe that the, generally speaking, the obvious answer is usually the answer. But again, we don't know for sure what causes CFS. However, um, the idea of homeostasis is, is relevant for many issues in the body. And basically, if your cortisol, if you keep, if you're continually stressed, and it could be for any kind of reason, let's say divorce or trauma or illness itself or a virus, you're continually stressed. For a while, your cortisol might go up and then it might go down. If, it continue, if you continue to be stressed from this stressor or multiple stressors, and your body reaches a point where it can't handle the stressors, your body might downregulate to a low cortisol state and stay there indefinitely. And this can be a source of chronic fatigue. And the idea of homeostasis, and it doesn't have to necessarily be about cortisol, it can happen in other health situations as well, which is why this is so important. But the idea of your body normally being in homeostasis 
and something or a stressor or something else throwing you off um, is actually, I believe, a huge clue. It was for me. So um, whether or not that makes sense, I wanted to start with that. Let me read something else to you. This is an amazing book. This is called Adrena Logic. Now this might look backwards to you. I'm, I'm thinking this might look backwards. It's spelled A-D-R-E-N-O L-A-G-O-I <laughs> I think I spelled that wrong. A-D-R-E-N-A L-O-G-I-C Adrena Logic. Can you see that? It might be backwards. I want to read this to you from chapter 8. Not enough of a good thing, the link between low cortisol and disease. And again, I'm not saying that this is potentially the cause for your chronic fatigue or your health issues, but again, um, this is, I'm trying to share an example. This is what, regis this is what um, registers with me as my source of fatigue, but it may not be your, your source of fatigue. However, the point is to pay attention to research, pay attention to documentaries, um, pay attention to group chats, and you know I have pinned at the top of our page here, chronic fatigue support. Um, there's a whole pinned chat about um, what caused, you know, what are the the ways that maybe your symptoms developed, and it's if you've got all, it's a chat from a whole bunch of different people, like I think hundreds and hundreds of people are in there sharing what caught what how their symptoms started so you can look through them and you want to find people's symptoms and situations that sound like yours and then potentially what were they doing what helped them potentially and that's how you start to be a health detective so again i'm reading to you from adrena logic she talks about chronic fatigue syndrome in here she also talks about fibromyalgia irritable bowel syndrome ptsd which is post-traumatic stress disorder burnout and chronic pain those are a lot of the issues that we talk about in our in our page on our page here so she's talking about hypocortisolism hypocortisolism is what i was just talking about where your cortisol drops due to maybe severe stress and it stays down there it stays down there which is where symptoms of chronic fatigue can come from so hypocortisol Hypocortisolism ultimately occurs after an initial phase of constant hyperactivity of the HPA axis. In this scenario, your stress response system resembles a car. It can only be driven for so long and so fast before it eventually will run out of gas. So basically, that's a metaphor. And what she's saying is that for a lot of people, it's what happens and a source of chronic fatigue can be where our body has stressors that keep hitting it and again it can be from different sources it could be from a virus it could also be from going through surgery or it could be from going through a very a very stressful time of life whether that's a virus or divorce or in my case it was a ski accident and surgery and what happens is your body starts to be unable to hand, to process the, the same type of stress hormones that you would need in order to stay in balance. And it will start to downregulate, meaning it will produce less of cortisol. And producing less of cortisol, if you stay stuck there, Basically, like she used the analogy of running out of gas, like your car runs out of gas. Does this sound familiar? You feel like you have nothing left in your tank. Does this sound familiar? Um, you feel exhausted all the time. Does that sound familiar? <laughs> um, for me, I realized that this was the cause of my fatigue. Now, I know it can be very overwhelming to piece together all this information, but I have to say that in my early 20s, um, when I developed chronic fatigue, I want—I I usually like to describe as going through this twice. I went through it twice. I went through severe symptoms of chronic fatigue first in my early 20s after my ski accident and surgery. And then I went through it again in my early 30s. I got, I got better, and I'll tell you how I got better and why this is relevant. I got better. 
And then in my early 30s, I was in a really stressful marriage. It was an abusive marriage. My husband was an alcoholic and he was abusive. And I started not sleeping well. And my stress levels went through the roof. So I had reached more or less homeostasis in my 20s. I'll tell you how I got there and why this is relevant. I had reached homeostasis. I was down here in my 20s after my ski accident and surgery. My cortisol levels dropped and they stayed low. And I had the symptoms of fatigue, chronic fatigue. And then I'll tell you how I started getting better. I got back up to homeostasis. And then in my early 30s, I was in a very, very stressful marriage. And because of my genetic predisposition and so many other factors, you know, we all have unique circumstances that make us who we are, including genetic vulnerabilities and certain circumstances. Even though I had reached homeostasis and I was feeling good, the stress of being in this stressful marriage caused my body to downregulate again with my cortisol. And I developed chronic fatigue again and it stayed down there. It actually got worse. So I stayed down there for years and years and years. So I want to tell you how I got better the first time and how this is connected. And again, this is about being a health detective. So pay attention to this may or may not be relevant for you. Although I do believe that hypocortisolism, um, some people call it adrenal fatigue. You're going to see that on the web a lot, adrenal fatigue. And you know, the lady, the author of this book, um, her name is Lena Edwards. She does not like the term adrenal fatigue. It's not recognized by modern medicine. Um, you know, and in my book, I do definitely talk about hypocortisolism and even adrenal fatigue for sure. Um, I personally don't worry about the terms anymore. It's the feeling, right? It's that feeling of having no gas in your car and feeling like you're completely burned out and exhausted. And, um, you know, I was diagnosed with CFS um, officially in 2005. So this was after the second bout with it when I was feeling exhausted again and couldn't seem to climb out of the hole. Um, I was worse than I was the first time. So even though I had regained my energy levels after the first time in my 20s, and I'll tell you how I did it and why it's connected to this, um, I went to see a doctor in my when I was around 35 and I was officially diagnosed with CFS, which was a huge bummer. I'd always suspected that's what it was, but to be officially diagnosed was a bummer. At the, and he didn't really necessarily, again, know the cause. Um, Beyond, he did say that I had a liver disorder, which is not related to what we're talking about now, hypocortisolism, but if you, if you have a liver disorder, meaning, and actually, did you know that about 40% of people with chronic conditions do not process things well? So again, that's a subject for another time, but that also has to do with being a health detective, right? So listening, listening for, you know, is that something that might be relevant for me? Um, not processing toxins well, not processing certain foods well, not processing prescription drugs well. And that's a different topic. I'll do that for another for a, for another video. But um, he did come up with that. He said, I suspect you have a liver disorder. And knowing that information was really, really help, helpful. Um, it's actually connected to poor methylation and when your liver doesn't detox properly, that can definitely lead to fatigue syndromes and leading to fatigue. Um, so that's really important piece of the puzzle. Um, that's not the example I plan on using today and I do talk about that in my book as well. So again, I talk about a hundred different theories roughly of chronic fatigue. So, but even though that he gave me that piece of the puzzle, the other piece of the puzzle is hypocortisolism or adrenal fatigue. And I'm not a fan of the word adrenal, the term adrenal fatigue, but frankly, I don't care anymore what it's called. It doesn't really matter. We know what it feels like. So again, it's when your body gets out of homeostasis and you start to have that low energy and you can't seem to recover. It's because your body was producing, producing more cortisol to start with more cortisol and then eventually it started down regulating so first it was up regulating some people will stay in up regulation and they might feel pain more 
A lot of people will down-regulate. Their cortisol will start to down-regulate. They'll produce less cortisol, and that's where a lot of the fatigue symptoms come from. So again, this is what the cause is for me. I'm not saying this is the cause for you, but this might help some of you. And again, it's about paying close attention to you know, descriptions of symptoms that might sound like you and being able to describe them to your practitioner. So I'm going to share a little bit from my book where I talk about adrenal fatigue and I do mention this book, Adrenal Logic. And I do talk about, oh, I wanted to share really quickly before I do that, what helped me in my early 20s? You might be wondering. So I, my body had been so stressed out and apparently, you know, I probably wasn't detoxing the ibuprofen well. I had the stress of surgery and a ski accident. My body was upregulating at first. Um, I was producing more cortisol, but then my body started producing less cortisol and it stayed there. This is called, the official term, the medical term is called tertiary adrenal insufficiency. That is a mouthful. I'll say it one more time. Tertiary adrenal insufficiency, also known as hypocortisolism, or on the internet, it's called adrenal fatigue. <laughs> so for me, I, I know that this is the cause of my chronic fatigue. This may not be the cause of your chronic fatigue, but the reason I wanted to make this video is when you, when you find the answer, if you do and you may not, Oh, hi, hi, Francis. Okay, so okay, so now, great question, Francis. So I'm gonna answer Francis's question here. And Francis, I wanna say thank you for asking the question. First of all, I wanna say I'm not a doctor or practitioner. <laughs> um, so good question. Um, some of the ways I know to increase it that may or may not work for people watching in our audience are um, cortisol will increase with exercise. So now I know exercise is an issue for a lot of people that have chronic fatigue, um, but that is one way you can do it, but you could do it in a holistic way. And again, I know a lot of people don't like to hear this, but you could try something like yoga or Qigong, something mellow and gentle to gently increase your cortisol levels. But Francis, that's a great question. And one of the reasons, and I hope I answered that to some degree, that's one of the ways. Um, Stress will increase it. So if you have like a, a healthy stress situation, say like what they call you stress or positive stress, say something going on in your life in a positive way. Hi, Francis. Something positive going on that will increase your cortisol a little bit. Um, so that's like you can do some positive stress. So maybe do like get involved in a project that keeps you busy that will increase your cortisol a little bit. Again, I'm not a practitioner, so... Um, anything I say, please take with a grain of salt. But Francis, what I want to address with your question is the goal that I've learned along the way is to, we, what we want to do is encourage our bodies to get back to producing regular cortisol. And there are many ways you can do that. Um, sometimes it, oftentimes it does involve rest, right? Because we want to let our bodies, if we're feeling exhausted, meaning if we're producing low cortisol on a, in a regular on a regular way, it means our bodies are burned out, they're exhausted, they're depleted. So I would say it might sound counterintuitive, but getting that deep sleep, and I will do a separate whole video about getting better sleep, um, is going to help you, your body start to regenerate and heal, and that will naturally, over time, help your cortisol levels start to even out again, if that makes sense. That's more of an, a longer game plan, but it's sort of nurturing your nervous system, if that makes sense. You can do that through stress management, sleep, um, yoga, meditation, um, nutrition. Does that make sense? Like Those are gentle ways to start helping your body produce more cortisol over time, if that makes sense. But if you're trying to increase, increase cortisol in the moment, and again, I'm not I'm not a doctor, I don't wanna, I may even be getting some of this wrong, I hope I'm not. I've, I've been researching this for a long time, but you, you never know for sure. You know what, I think we actually have some doctors and practitioners, honestly, in, on, in chronic fatigue support and in our chronic fatigue coach group. I've seen practitioners in here, so maybe one of them will chime in to answer your question, hopefully specifically, Francis, but 
I do know that for sure exercise will increase cortisol. So if you're able to exercise, that will increase it in the moment. Um, um, and again, if you can't do regular exercise, which a lot of people can't, because they're so burned out and so exhausted, that's the reason. Um, your body's asking you to rest if your cortisol is down. Um, but you can help your body increase it to some degree, I would say through gentle yoga. And I'm going to be doing some gentle yoga here. Um, so, you know, if that, and even chair yoga, you know, or even like mellow qigong or tai chi, something like that would help you increase it a little bit, I believe. Exercise does help. You just don't, you just don't want to, for a lot of people that are in chronic fatigue support or watching this, you know, some of you might be able to do regular exercise, but for a lot of you, your, your body's not going to want to do that because it'll feel like it's too stressful. Um, so and again, I know that's a different subject, but okay, let me see what Francis is saying. Okay, interesting. So I do lots of guitar teaching and practice. I've always been very active and I can still play tennis, but it does wipe me out. I can only do this if I'm, hang on, if I'm going to see if I'm seeing if I can read more. If I'm at what I call the better end of my fatigue. Yes, exactly. So I tend to have six to nine months of fatigue. Okay. And again, Francis, I'm not a practitioner. However, yeah, I would say guitar teaching, you know, here's the thing is, you know, we talk a lot about this in our group, on our page and in our group, is pacing, right? So much of it's about pacing. So you want to think of what is your energy envelope for the day, you know, and or if for the moment even. And just do your best to work within it, work within it. You don't want to push don't push beyond it because that will make you feel tired, right? I think we all know this intuitively, but if you're looking to increase cortisol in the moment and also kind of kind of help help your body, um, your nervous system to kind of re kind of reboot, then work with your energy envelope. Yeah, so exactly, Francis. So you're, he's saying when I'm too burned out, I literally just walk. Walking is so good for you. It is so good for you because you can go at whatever pace you want to, right? Like sometimes I remember I really didn't have the energy to take like a regular walk, but I would just sort of forest bathe. I would go kind of very slowly stroll in the forest and absorb, you know, nature and just kind of stretch my legs. You can always just sit in the sun or the shade. And yeah, so it's definitely about working within your, your energy envelope. And I believe you can increase cortisol naturally within there, but you're also going to start to help your nervous system rebalance. So Francis, that's an amazing question. And also I would say teaching guitar is going to increase your cortisol because in a good way, you know, because you're the teacher, right? So you're going to have to, oh, you're talking about cutting it out, the guitar playing. Um, well, um, when you have the energy for it, it's, it, because you're the teacher, that will be a, a source of positive stress. So that's going to give you a little bit of a, a cortisol lift and, and other, other things as well. So I hope some of that helped you. And what I have found is that so much of it's about finding ways to rebalance your nervous system. Um, let me tell you what I did in my early 20s and why this is related specifically to hypo, hypocortisolism or tertiary adrenal insufficiency or adrenal fatigue. I stopped using stimulants completely. <laughs> I cut them out for seven years. <laughs> and now that was extreme, but intuitively I, no I noticed and I knew that stimulants were making my energy, my exhaustion worse. And the reason is, is because I was in a low, I was in a perpetually low cortisol state. So now this wasn't the case before. Before my ski accident, before surgery, I was able to eat chocolate for sure and not have any repercussions. Now I was pretty sensitive to coffee and I still am to this day. Um, for me, my liver can't process coffee very well. So however, I was kind of able to tolerate it. After my ski accident and surgery, I couldn't tolerate coffee at all. It made me feel awful. So, and Francis, I just want to, yeah, and I, I hope I, I hope I answered your question, Francis. I'm not sure, 
I'm able to piece together all the all of, your, all of your comments now, but I hope I answered some of it. I'll jump back into the conversation when I'm off of the live here to see if I can, um, I'll read all of your comments all together. <laughs> um, but hopefully I answered some of it. But um, so again, what helped me recover my energy in my 20s was cutting out stimulants because they were stressing my body out even more and even more and even more and making my cortisol lower and lower. And by cutting stimulants out over a period of time, and it was a long time, it took a long time, my body started, I started to sleep deeper. I could feel my body healing and my energy over time and my cortisol levels started to even out and I got back to homeostasis. It took me a long time. But that was what worked for me. And when I heard the exhausted docu series, and they were talking about adrenal fatigue or hypocortisolism, um, it reminded me that that is what not was not only the cause for me, but the the way out of it is you know through my second time with this um, with CFS and chronic fatigue was to to reduce my stressors and reduce stimulants and to help my body, my nervous system reboot and heal. So, so, so Francis, with, in terms of stimulants, you know, and uh, the, the uh, docu-series Exhausted, they have a bonus where they talk just about caffeine. Um, I highly recommend getting this again. Here is the Exhausted, you can go to Whole TV, can you see that up there? Go to whole.tv. In the exhausted docu series, they have a bunch of other docu series on here as well, but they have bonuses, and one of them they talk about caffeine, and so stimulants. Yes, it's it's stimulants are many things, and what I have found is that I can handle some of them to a small degree, um, but I can't get if I get overstimulated. Um, at first, my cortisol, obviously, your cortisol will go up, but then it'll, it can potentially drop lower, if that makes sense. So if you get overstimulated, this is not just from stimulants, but from any type of stressor. If you get overstimulated, first your cortisol is going to go up because your body is reacting. But then over time, it can downregulate and stay there. But Francis, in terms of stimulants, um, everybody's different how they process stimulants, how they handle them. I have a more sensitive system. So I can handle, I can't process coffee in terms of the, re the, the regular way that most people drink it, like a cup of coffee. My liver can't process it. And that's always been the case pretty much regardless of chronic fatigue. Um, I can take it in other forms in a very, very small amount. Like I have a protein shake that has um, some coffee in it. And there's also another protein shake I drink that has a little bit of coffee. I seem to do fine with those. What I've learned, and this is also some of the research that I came across again in my book, The Memory of Health, which I know I, I'm going to read to you. Um, there is some research in there about a doctor who was talking about how a very small amount of stimulation coupled with nutrition. Now he was using prescription drugs. He was using some kind of prescription drug, which I think is a stimulant and I have no idea what it was. Um, I have the link for the research in my book and um, you know, he came up with the idea of, and this is something I figured out that it also works for me is a small amount of stimulation with a small amount of nutrition kind of helps your body potentially helps my body at least stay more in balance, um, but everyone's going to be different. But in general, you know, I'm, I'm not here to tell you not to take stimulants. Um, I take a small amount and I seem to do okay. And what I have found is I, I don't use coffee, but um, except for the ways I described. And when I'm going to do a video on supplements, you know, I'll do on supplements for energy. I'll do um, uh, supplements for sleep and you know tactics for energy and sleep and brain fog. I'm going to do separate videos for those. But um, um, in terms of one um, stimulant I found that's really mellow is acai. A-C-A-I. Acai. And it has theobromine in it. So it doesn't have caffeine. It has a cousin to caffeine which is theobromine. And I generally use the standardized version of acai. And 
and that helps me with brain fog and energy and it helps just a little bit. But it, so it gives me a little bit of stimulation, but it doesn't throw my body over the top, so it doesn't throw off my cortisol levels. And Francis is saying, yes, so yes, exactly. And Francis, I don't drink alcohol either. Yeah, exactly. So, you know, sometimes we have to make sacrifices. I personally can't process alcohol. Um, I do have a liver disorder. So, so the two things that my two causes of chronic fatigue, and again, I'm not saying these are anyone else's causes of chronic fatigue, although, you know, again, be that health detective, pay attention to what your specific symptoms are, and then listen, listen and pay attention to where you might run across other people or situations where you hear your symptoms being described. Um, my two causes of chronic fatigue are my liver disorder, which is why I, I cannot drink alcohol, I can't drink coffee. My, my liver can't process a lot of stuff. And if I do attempt, if I do attempt to drink alcohol or <laughs> especially alcohol, but even coffee, I will pay the price for days, if not weeks. Um, you know, a good example of this is long before I ever knew I had a liver disorder. When I was 18, I lived in Europe and, you know, I was in Germany, so you know everybody was drinking, and I had my first glass of wine, and you know it was really fun in the moment, and then um, I felt awful the next day. I was 18 years old, and I knew instinctively, oh, I can't, I can't drink alcohol. I just knew it. Um, now I have a couple other stories. It took me a couple tries to, you know, a couple more encounters with alcohol and coffee, for that matter, before I really figured it out, but. Um, you know, we all have different, again, genetic vulnerabilities. We all have different environments that we're living in. Um, we all have different challenges in terms of, you know, what's going to work for us or not work for us in terms of food, environment, people, strategies, etc. But um, the two causes of my fatigue are my liver disorder and um, where my body um, got overstimulated from surgery and stress. And it, then it downregulated into what's called adrenal fatigue. So I feel very blessed that the, you know the more awareness you have of what causes your health challenge, whether it's chronic fatigue or CFS or something else, um, the easier, of course, it is to potentially deal with it. Not always, um, but my hope for you is that you will find the source, and if you don't, don't stress about it, because the last thing we need is more stress. But let me read to you a little bit from my book. Now, um, again, this is called The Memory of Health, and if you want to find this, um, you can find it on lulu.com, and also it should be on Amazon. On Lulu only, lulu.com, I, I, I make it at 30% off. Um, so that's for you guys, so that... Um, so I, I'll give you a code for it. It's um, I'll, I'll write, I'll type the code in, or I'll tell you at the end. But anyway, this book took me ten years to write, and there's it's called The Memory of Health because that's the first title that came into my head. Um, I was remembering what it was like to feel good. <laughs> I was remembering what it was like before I had energy issues and chronic fatigue, and um, there's also a ton of research in it. Um, and there are a lot of strategies in it. So again, the strategy that I did in my 20s was to limit stimulants significantly, actually to the point where I cut them out pretty much for seven years. I was very, very, very strict about it. Now, that's not to say that I didn't mess up a couple times, um, where I would literally have like a bite of something like chocolate, and then I'd be like, oh no, I, 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 just, I told myself I'm not going to have this. I was really pretty extreme about it. I was extreme to the point that I wouldn't be today, but it made a huge difference. It actually helped my nervous system heal, and it helped me sleep deeper. And what, how, what they say in the Exhausted docuseries, which I cannot recommend enough watching, is that sleep, deep sleep is is the one of the main ways that you're going to restore your energy levels and it's how you heal too so now there are other strategies involved too but you want to sleep deeply and if you have stimulants in your system especially closer to the end of the day and if you don't process them well you may not sleep as well hi Lydia so Lydia says I don't drink because it made me feel awful for ages only just being diagnosed with CFS but I listened to what my body was telling me Cut out alcohol instinctively. Exactly, Lydia. Yeah, yeah. Namaste to you. Absolutely. That's exactly what it is. Is 
listen to your instincts because I have to tell you that the number one thing that helped me and still helps me to this day is exactly what Lydia just said. You want to, you know, in addition to being a health detective and listening for your symptoms, paying attention to them, you want to listen to your listen to your body, what it's telling you to do because your symptoms are trying it's information. Your symptoms are signals. Your body's trying to give you signals, it's trying to tell you something's out of kilter. Something's out of kilter here. I've got low energy or I've got pain, right? Like you might be upregulated, you might be experiencing pain. Your body might be over responding to stress in a way that you're feeling pain. Or it might be, it might be, it might have had so much stress that you're now down regulated and you're producing low cortisol and your body has fatigue. Your symptoms are going to tell you what to do next. And that is my number one tip. And Lydia describes it perfectly. Um, she was describing how she, does, she doesn't drink because it made her feel awful for ages, but now she's been diagnosed with CFS. And she listened to what her body was telling her exactly and then cut out alcohol instinctively. Exactly. Listen to your body. Listen to your instincts. Your body knows and you know. Now, I'm not saying we have all the answers. Um, we have to stay connected. We have to help one another. It's really helpful to find a practitioner that knows what they're doing. Um, I, I, I personally believe there are more practitioners out there that can help than you might feel. Um, again, you can find practitioners in the Exhausted docu-series. There are practitioners in there who are taking, a, taking patients. Um, you know, it's... You know, and what I've heard from people that have chronic conditions, whether it's from CFS or MS, it could be any type of chronic condition, is that it's a combination of talking to a practitioner, doing your own research, and then listening to your body. What does your body tell you? And you have to kind of be your own best advocate. You have to instinctively do what you know is going to work or have a sense that might work. It's piecing together the puzzles. As a health detective, you have to piece together the puzzles, both from research, conversations, and what your body says to you. So Francis says, can you message me after as I think I need to try some of these things and the book sounds useful. Absolutely. I am seeing a cranial osteopath at the moment to see if it can help me. Francis, yes, I will. Um, yes, and please maybe add me to make sure that we connect. Add me as eat on, I'm Edie Summers on Facebook, just, you know, regular Facebook. E-D-I-E, -E, and then summer like this season with an S on the end of it. Add me as a friend on there, and then we can chat, you know, in, in um, on IM on there. And definitely, and so cranial, now cranial osteopath is interesting. Um, yeah, you know, I saw so many specialists, and, uh, you know, I know that sometimes we don't find the right people, but sometimes we do. Sometimes we do. And when you said, Francis, when you say cranial osteopath, I don't know... I don't know their specialty. I can probably guess what it is because that's bones, head and bones, right? <laughs> but I do know, I want to share, you reminded me of something. For anyone who's listening who has, um, who potentially had a head injury, say you were in a car accident and had a head injury, um, I've heard that cranial sacral therapy helps. That's kind of where they work with your head in a therapeutic way. Cranial sacral therapy, if you've had a head injury. So now, you know, there are so many ways, there are so many healing systems. And, you know, I actually did an interview with a lady who was a journalist who had a chronic illness. And it's, it's on, I do a podcast and, um, she, we were talking about how I asked her, what do you think it was that made you feel better? And she said, you know, I don't think that it was just one thing. It was a combination of things. It was a combination of things that helped me feel better, that helped me reach homeostasis again, right? So I added in that. But homeostasis is a really big concept in well-being and in medicine. And the body can get out of homeostasis for different reasons. It's not necessarily about cortisol. It can be for other, other health issues as well. So Lydia says... I also have alopecia, an autoimmune condition where my body rejects my hair. Got tested for food intolerances, 
cut out all the food triggers and my hair came back. Excellent. Lydia, that's amazing. See, now that's where, you know, I'm so glad that you got tested. And now see, that's a perfect example of being a health detective and also listening to your body, right? So, so she was noticing that her body was rejecting her hair, so she got tested. And she got tested for food intolerances. Sometimes we, we get tested for many different things, right? First, before we figure out what potentially an issue was. But for her, for Lydia, she got tested and then her hair started growing back. She cut out foods that she was sensitive to. So all, hi all, I hope I'm saying your name correctly. All thanks to Dr. Gozar, I want to express my, yeah. Okay, so he's talking about a doctor that he works with. He wants to express his profound, warm gratitude to the natural herbal medicine, which I got from Dr. Gozar, for my, which, has, which has done for my life. I was diagnosed with diabetes. I'm trying to see if I can read all this. I've got comments coming in here. I hope I can read them all. And since then, oh shoot, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, that, I'll have to respond to you in there because the comments are coming in quickly now, but I'm so glad you found someone to work with. Yay, that makes me really happy. And then Francis is saying, manipulation of brain, okay, so the doctor he found, the cranial osteopath, is the manipulation of the brain, but they deal with the whole body as well, so lungs and liver movements, got it, yeah, so... It's true, like, you know, it's, I just wanna say that I know it's, it can feel overwhelming to have a health challenge and then have to try to figure out what to do. I know it can be overwhelming and um, I want to say to you to, no matter how overwhelming it is to keep going because you never know when you're gonna find help or an answer. You just never know, and it's worth it. You know, you might sift through a lot of information and it may not sound like it applies to you, and you might do that for a really long time, and then all of a sudden you hear something, or you read something, or you see something, and you say, that sounds like me. That sounds like me. And then you can research further and then you might be able to start feeling better. It's totally worth it. So again, this subject is being a health detective. I'm, you know, and being your own best advocate too. Don't ever give up on yourself. My father had esophageal cancer and unfortunately he passed away. He put up a brave fight for a year and a half. Unfortunately, he passed away, but he said to me, the last time I saw him, he said, don't ever lose the light from your eyes. He said, don't ever give up hope. Too many people lose the light from their eyes. Keep, keep, keep hope alive, it's so important. Hi, Sarah. Sarah says, my daughter and I have both suffered from CFS for seven years and 10 years respectively. We have gradually worked through our fatigue and triggers and have learned how to pace ourselves. Yes, pacing is huge. I'm gonna see if I can read more of this pace our lives and supplements. And so, yes, to stay in balance with our condition. Exactly, Sarah, I do a lot of the same things. So much of it is pacing and yeah, so it's it's managing stress using, for me, I use supplements and of course eating well helps. Um, occasionally we crash if we do something too stressful, exactly. I have a long list of supplements and nutrition that has helped us get back to a better quality of life. Yay, I'm so happy. Yeah, it's so true. Um, that's, a, that's a lot of what I do as well. Hi, Tracy. And Tracy says, ah, oh, that is so precious and true. It is, and it's, and Tracy, I'm not sure if you're referring to the comment above or what I said about when, when my dad said, you know, I was so impacted when he said that to me. It was one of the last things, it was one of our last conversations and it just really struck me. You know, he said, don't ever give up, don't ever lose hope. Too many people lose the light from their eyes and I was just like, whoa, um, it's really true. Yes, thanks, Tracy, yeah. It was it was an incredibly profound moment. And, you know, here's my father who's who put up a very brave battle with esophageal cancer and, you know, and I at the time was sick again. I at the time had CFS again. And it was a very hard time for me. This was after my divorce, I got, I got really sick after my divorce. It's a long story. I had to I had all these stressors happen at once, right? I was dealing with a violent marriage. Thanks, Tracy. It is very profound and beautiful. Thank you. Yeah, he's 
he was, he was a very insightful, insightful man and very, it was just a really stunning quote. It was really a stunning thing to hear from him. Um, yeah. So thank you, Sarah. Yes. Amazing life message from your father. Yeah. He's, that was, I still remember it to this day and I, yeah, it just had a profound impact on me and you just, you never know, you never know where you're going to find hope and you never know where you're going to find answers. You never know. It's so important to keep your hope alive. Um, yeah, Tracy, feel free to add me as a friend. Um, it's Edie Summers on Facebook. Just add me as a friend and we can chat on I am on there. Um, I, I, I think I'm pretty easy to find on there, hopefully. So my name is, you spell it E-D-I-E. -E. So it's like the word, it's like the name Eddie, but with one D only. So Edie. Eddie with one D. Edie Summers. Summer like the season with an S on the end of it. So, um, <laughs> and <laughs> I'm laughing because I only planned this for to be a few minutes, but um, <laughs> yeah, feel free to, feel free to reach out, reach out, Tracy. But, you know, there are so many, so many things to talk about, even within the subject of one topic, right? Being a health detective. And, you know, I just wanted to kind of frame that conversation, but there are so many topics within this. But I would say, I, I will always say this to you, keep your hope alive. Keep listening for what sounds like your situation. Keep reading for what sounds like your situation. And you never know where you might run across a conversation with someone else who has similar symptoms to you and they might have, you know, made progress. There used to be a whole website about this where um, people with similar symptoms could match up and come together. Right. So um, and again, just for me, you know, I heard this docuseries and I all of a sudden what they were saying, it became crystal clear that this is my issue, you know. So um, my my issue is hypocortisolism. And now they didn't talk They you know, the liver disorder is a whole other ball ballgame. Um, so, you know, sometimes we can have multiple, sometimes a lot of us have multiple chronic conditions, right? We have, or multiple life challenges. We might have gone through trauma. We might have chronic fatigue or CFS. We might have MS and we might have gone through a divorce. I mean, <laughs> you know, a lot, I mean, especially if you add COVID-19 into the mix, um, there is, most people have been through trauma at this point, and I think a lot of you have noticed, I've been sharing the research about how COVID-19, a lot of people are developing chronic fatigue now who have had COVID-19. So, at any rate, um, again, just pay attention to what sounds like you, keep your hope alive, and I just want to read a little bit, again, so this is, so this is from my book, The Memory of Health, and you can find it on lulu.com for 30% off, um, I, I, I may be able to type this link, and if not, I'll just share it this way. Um, type in this link, bit.ly forward slash memory of health 30. Again, that's bit.ly forward slash memory of health 30. That takes you to the version where you can get 30% off. So it makes it, it's affordable anyway, but... I wanted to make it a discount for you guys. So, um, okay, I'm gonna read a little bit from here because this is related to how I started this off, um, kind of discovering. So this is, you know, again, I have tons of theories in here. I have a whole chapter on um, theories of chronic fatigue, a whole chapter. Uh, but here, oh shoot, I may have just lost the page. Okay, no, it's right here, hang on. Okay, I'm going to read a little bit to you. Adrenal fatigue or there is still a grand divide between alternative and mainstream medicine on most fronts of how to practice medicine and what constitutes healing. Thankfully, we now have integrative medicine that bridges this gap to a certain extent. But alternative and mainstream medicine more often than not do not see eye to eye. I hope that changes. Although the practice of CAM, complementary and alternative medicine, shows progress in modern medicine. But there is still plenty of controversy. For example, there is a debate between mainstream and alternative medicine over whether or not adrenal fatigue is a real condition. And frankly, at this point, I think it's just a, it's just about 
It's the same, it's different words for the same condition. Much of the conventional medical community claims there is no such thing as adrenal fatigue. They say that either you have an irreversible autoimmune endocrine or hormonal disorder called adrenal insufficiency, or that your adrenals are just fine. There is no in-between. And that's the thing is with a lot of conditions, there's the in-between, right? Like there could be hypothyroidism where your thyroid levels might be off just a little bit. And again, your body is not in homeostasis, right? Your thyroid levels are off just a little bit, whether they're up or down just a little bit, but not enough to be detected by tests, but they can still, it can still cause a lot of symptoms. So that's just an example. And it's the same thing with your adrenals. So although I tend to relate to alternative and integrative thought, I believe mainstream medicine is right about adrenal insufficiency, at least in terms of the name. Okay, I'm going to drop down here a little bit. So there are three types of adrenal insufficiency. The primary kind is a disorder of the adrenals themselves, and that's not what we're talking about here. Um, so that's when about 90% of the adrenal cortex is damaged and cannot produce enough cortisol. This is known as Addison's disease. I'm sure some of you have run across Addison's disease in your search for answers, <laughs> and some of you might have Addison's disease. Then there's secondary adrenal insufficiency. I'm kind of skipping through some of this. It's due to inadequate secretion of ACTH by the pituitary gland. So I'm not gonna read that part. I'm gonna read about the third one. This is the one that's also called adrenal fatigue. Tertiary adrenal insufficiency also known as hypocortisolism. Here is Dr. Lena Edwards on the subject, and Dr. Lena Edwards is the author of Adrenologic, and again, that might look backwards to you. I recommend getting this book. It's really, really good. Adrenologic, if that's backwards to you, A-D-R-E-N-A-L-O-G-I-C. I quote her in my book. Research has shown that the most common cause of low cortisol states is hyperreactivity of the HPA axis. That's the hypopituitary adrenal axis. Okay, so it's, let me start over. Research has shown that the most common cause of low, cortis, low cortisol states is hyperreactivity of the HPA axis to the negative feedback induced by hypercortisolism. So that means that you're gonna produce, if your body is, overreacting to stress, any kind of stressors, your, adrenal, your cortisol is going to go up first and then over time it might drop and stay down there. This is hypocortisolism. Essentially cortisol rises, the central nervous system responds and acts to lower cortisol to keep you in balance, which is homeostasis. But the control is never removed once the break has been applied. Okay, so what she means is that first you're overreacting, you're producing more cortisol, you're hyperreacting to stress, any type of stress, a virus, a divorce, a car accident, a ski accident, multiple stressors, another illness, and then your body downregulates that cortisol and it can't take the break off. Your body stays like this instead of being like this, where you're in homeostatic balance and you feel good. This is what she's saying. A patient can have symptomatic low cortisol without having Addison's disease. Okay, so I could go on and read more, but again, I, so that's again from my book, The Memory of Health, and I, I, I put together a ton of research, so even if your issue isn't hypocortisolism, it could be something else. I, I cover a lot of it in here, The Memory of Health, so um, I just wanted to share that with you. I know that's way more than I plan to share, but just in case something helps you, again, to sum up, be a health detective. Listen for your symptoms. Pay attention to what you hear or see that sounds like you in terms of your symptoms. Pay attention to your own body. What is your body saying to you? Respond to what your body says to you. If your body says, you know, it's, it's giving you signals that I'm feeling stressed out, try to rest more and 
decompress more, let your nervous system kind of find its balance again. And be your own best advocate. When you, when you find a practitioner, someone that listens to you, someone that you feel you can trust, someone that you feel you can relate to that is not, you feel is knowledgeable, share as much detail as you can. Because the more information they have, the more they can help you specifically with what's going on with you. And details matter. Details matter because even within being out of balance in terms of homeostasis, the details matter for your situation. And the people that are trained well are going to be able to help you. Um, a lot of naturopaths can help you. Um, a lot of a lot of integrative doctors can help you. A lot of doctors who are what they call functional medicine doctors can help you. Again, if you want to find a list of doctors who are practitioners who are taking patients right now, I encourage you to go to whole.tv, get a subscription for one month, and I believe there's a way to connect with some of the practitioners on there. But also, people are always making recommendations for practitioners as well. Um, so, long video, but thank you everyone for who, who made comments, and I know I'll connect with some of you. Um, yeah, just feel free to add me, Edie Summers, on Facebook, and we can chat on IM. And um, again, keep your hope alive, You and keep researching, keep searching. You never know when you're going to run across something that sounds like your symptoms, and that can be a breakthrough for you. Um, thanks for watching, everyone, and um, feel free to also write comments about videos you want to see. What would help you? I'm, you know, I can talk ad nauseum as you've just seen about a lot of subjects. So my goal is to educate and to share what I've run across. Maybe to inspire, to give you hope. I'm happy to talk about topics. Um, I'm going to do some videos on supplements, um, energy, brain fog, sleep, and I'm sure there are other things as well. But feel free to put in the comments um, soon so I so I catch them um, or add me on Facebook and you can write to me that way. Um, leave comments about things you'd like to see. And um, I'm also going to do some other educational videos that aren't live, that are like visual and shorter, so um, you can sort through it easier as well. <laughs> but I, honestly, once I get started on the topic, it's hard to stop. So <laughs> anyway, thanks for watching, everyone, <laughs> and I'll talk to you online. And, um, and I, I want to also, I just want to say thank you so much to everyone who participates on chronic fatigue support. And also our private group, Chronic Fatigue Coach, and really helps be moderators on there. Um, as much as I'd love to, I can't possibly respond to... Yeah, see, I, see, I can see all the moderators are <laughs> sending love. Thank you so much for responding to people. And we're, we're all in this together. We're all helping one another. Um, it's, you know, if you have a, some type of chronic condition or other really great life health challenge, it's so common to feel isolated and it's so important to feel connected. Find a way to feel connected. Um, and I, I'm so grateful to moderators and people who are keeping the conversation going so that people feel connected and heard. Thank you so much. It is invaluable to people more, much more than you realize. And it, I'm so grateful for your help. Um, let's keep helping one another, let's keep listening to one another, and let's build an even stronger community. We have an amazing community, both on Chronic Fatigue Support and Chronic Fatigue Coach and beyond. There are some amazing pages, not even just on Facebook. I mean, there are amazing communities. There's The Mighty. Have you heard of The Mighty? That's a really great connected community. Um, stay connected. And thank you so much for everyone for your help. And thanks for watching, everyone. I'll, I'll talk to you soon one way or the other. Take care. And I hope that you start to feel better. Take care. I'll talk to you soon. Bye. Let me see if I can figure out how to finish this now. <laughs> okay, hang on a second. Okay, bye, everyone.